Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on Jesus. Wow, who would have thought? Actually, it's uh, who named Jesus, Jesus. And I do this because of the uh, Hebrew Roots people that I've been running into on uh, Facebook, which I'm an administrator of a group for the uh, Revelation Scriptures uh, group. And uh, Chris, Christopher Campbell seems like a really nice guy. I've conversed with him back when we had Google+. Plus. He trusts me. And uh, he says, hey, being a you know i'll make an administrator and he says you know uh post your stuff on my you know on the facebook thing and you know i guess he believes i got sound doctrine he's got um i did a video for him uh referring uh, everybody to his website because when it comes to the book of revelation i don't know anybody that knows that book better than he does i mean I was going through his stuff, and he knows, and and he and where it ties into the Old Testament. I mean, I've got a fairly decent background in Revelation, but I mean, he knows it. He knows it backwards, forwards, right side up, upside down, inside out. He he's got it down. So I've been trying to learn a little bit from him. But uh, you got all these Hebrew roots people, <clears throat> and they're arguing about, you know, how do you pronounce the name? Well, it's not Jesus, they'll tell you, because, well, Jesus was a Hebrew, and they must have spoke Hebrew, and it's Yahua, and it's Yahashua, and it's Ye Yeshua, and it's all these other made-up things, and they, they can't even uh, decide how to pronounce the name. But let me give you a quick little background. There was a guy named Alexander. He was from Macedonia, which is, um, I don't know, I think it's like part of Greece. They speak Greek. And uh, he conquered, basically from India all the way to the Middle East, from Egypt, and he conquered the land of Israel, um, that whole area. I mean, according to history, he never lost a battle. He died when he was in his early 30s, from what I understand. He must have got a big head and thought he was some kind of god or something, and God struck him down. But the thing was, when you're conquered you're going to learn the language of the conqueror. I mean, you're not going to tell somebody that just conquered your land, oh, well, you're going to have to learn how to speak Hebrew, buddy, if you want to communicate with us. No, they're going to pull out their sword, stick it in your throat, and say, uh, you're going to learn Greek, and we don't want you learning, speaking your language anymore, because we don't want you to making a conspiracy against us, and we can't understand you. Um... I mean, let's face it, uh, There's there's been conquerors in history that absolutely forbid the people to speak their old language under pain of death for that reason. So, people learned Greek. It was the language of commerce in the day of Christ. Rome had only recently conquered... Um, that area, Israel, at that time. You know, uh, Greece conquered the area, and then Rome conquered uh, Greece. And uh, so Greek was the common language back in that day. The Hebrew Roots people cannot, absolutely cannot prove to you from the Bible what language Jesus spoke to the people. I mean, he could have, I'm sure in the synagogue he spoke Hebrew. I, I, I have no doubt. 
But his father, Joseph, well, his parent, adoptive parent, I guess you could say, um, was a carpenter. And if you wanted to sell your stuff, what are you, you know, you going to go to the Romans and, and speak Hebrew to them? No, you're either going to learn no Greek, which was the common language of the area at the time, or you're going to speak Latin. And among the, uh, the, the uh, Romans, they, if, you, if you dealt with the Roman government, you, you better know la um, Latin. But the thing was, uh, I think, from what I understand in history, the great majority of Romans that were educated anyways knew Greek because if you traveled outside of Rome or Italy, um, everybody spoke Greek. I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, Greek is like what English is today. I mean, you can go... English is the number one second language in the world. If you've got a college degree, you can go almost any country in the world and get a job teaching English if you're a native speaker. China, Thailand, uh, India, uh, all kinds of places. Japan. My dad was married to a woman that was an English teacher in Japan. They basically gave her like a walk-in closet as an apartment to live in, and she couldn't really go anywhere because everything was so expensive. Oh my, she was telling me about Tokyo, like for an apple is like $10 or something like that. It was crazy, she was telling me. I, I mean, I could get that wrong, you know, but it was, it was outrageous. And uh, I mean, you look at English teachers, overseas English teachers, all kinds of jobs. But Greek, the New Testament was written in Greek. That is a given. There's over 5,000 manuscript, uh, partial manuscripts in Greek of the New Testament. There are zero Hebrew ones. Zero. Zero goose egg okay so let's take a look at Matthew chapter 1 and you can use this when you uh, when you run into these people all right let's go to Matthew 1 verse 18 now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, espoused means uh, they're engaged, uh, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately, privily. Um, he was going to divorce her. Oh, man, how do you like that? You know, here it is, I'm engaged to this woman. We're supposed to get married, and she's pregnant. Oh, boy. You know, it was kind of an embarrassment, really, for, for you know, Joseph. But, uh, you know, so he's trying to figure out how to do this. But, you know, he doesn't want to hurt her, so he's going to do it privately. Verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold... The angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach? No. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. And the Hebrew roots people will say, Well, the, the letter J didn't exist a few hundred years ago, so Jesus couldn't possibly be his name. 
Well, I guess Jerusalem doesn't exist either because there's no J, right? So it can't be Jerusalem, which is spelled with a J, right? So Jerusalem doesn't exist. Oh, 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 oh. And Jews don't exist either because there's no J, right? So Jews don't exist, right? Throw that in their face. Deceivers. I used to think they were just misguided. I don't believe that anymore. Boy, some of the comments I've been reading. Oh. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Look at Isaiah 7.14. If you got a Bible that doesn't say virgin, throw it in the garbage. You don't have a Bible. You got Satan's commentary. That's what you got. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. If the Hebrew roots people were honest, they would use the word Emmanuel. The word Emmanuel, Emmanuel, is in the Old Testament, in Isaiah, and it's in Matthew. It's in both the Old and the New Testament. Why don't they call him Emmanuel, God with us? Why don't they do that? No, they got they insist on Yeshua, Yahuwah, Yahashua. Uh, there's about 20 different ways I've heard it pronounced. And I don't want to learn them all because personally I think it's talking about uh, the Antichrist. But, you know, Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Emmanuel is Hebrew. That's why in the Greek when they said Emmanuel, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, because these are Greek speakers, you got to tell them, well, in the Hebrew it's Emmanuel, but in Greek, which being interpreted is God with us. 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus was not Michael the angel. Jesus was not Satan's brother like the Mormons teach or the Jehovah's Witnesses teach. He's uh, Michael. No. He was God come in the flesh, God with us, Emmanuel. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, not in the carnal bedroom sense, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name, not Yeshua HaMashiach, knew, and he called his name Jesus. You see, when they say this Yeshua stuff, these Hebrew roots people, they're denying your Bible in English and in Greek. That's basically what they're doing. But Matthew was originally written in Hebrew, and then they mistranslated it into Greek, and then they mistranslated it into English. Yeah, right. That's what they want us to believe. So let's go sit at the feet of an antichrist unbelieving rabbi, which is master, which you're not supposed to call any man rabbi, because ma rabbi means master. Did you know that? Yeah, it does. Oh, you don't believe me, huh? Matthew 23 and verse 8. Jesus speaking, but be not ye called rabbi. Now he's talking to uh, his disciples. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. John one thirty eight. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? See, rabbi means master. So when you're calling a rabbi a rabbi, you're calling a master. And the Bible 
And they're quick. These Hebrew Roots people are quick to point out that the Catholic priests uh, are called Father. And Jesus said not to call any man your father, which is true. But it also says not to call any man master. And that is in uh, Matthew 23, verse 9. Jesus said, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Obviously, he's not talking about your dad. No. But what do the Catholics call him? You know, uh, you know, oh, I'm going to the confession chamber. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. You really think a Catholic priest has got the authority to forgive you for your sins? I think I'd rather ask Jesus to forgive me my sins, but that's just me, you know. How about the book of Luke, chapter 1? Now, Luke was a physician. He's a doctor, okay? Uh, now, the Hebrew Roots people will argue that Matthew was originally written in Hebrew, but Luke, they can't say that about. Luke was definitely Greek. Definitely. But you know what? There are no Hebrew manuscripts of Matthew. There's no Hebrew manuscripts of any of the New Testament. You know, who tried to stamp out Christianity? Wasn't the Romans, at least not at first. All right, so let's go to Luke chapter 1, uh, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, the angel Gabriel, okay? Gabriel was the one... The angel um, that named John the Baptist, and uh, I believe, uh, let me see, I'm going to have to look this up. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that I was right. Gabriel went to Daniel. I don't know if how many of you have read the book of Daniel. Uh, I consider Daniel one of the hardest books in the Bible to understand. But uh, in chapter 8 and in chapter 9 of the book of Daniel, Gabriel, the angel, one of God's top angels, uh, spoke to Daniel and made him, well, let's read. Daniel 9.21, Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. Yeah, that Gabriel. All right, so here it is, Gabriel. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. All right, so Gabriel... The angel from God sent from God, in verse 31, says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and thou shalt not call his name Yeshua HaMashiach. No. And bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. But there's no J in Jesus. Yeah, I know. And Jews don't exist, and Jerusalem doesn't exist either, you idiots. Hebrew roots people. They make me sick. They really do. I'd like to beat them over the head with my uh, Christian Bible, but they wouldn't believe it anyways. But the rabbi told us, well, wait a minute. The Bible says not to call any man your rabbi. Well, the Bible's mistranslated by those terrible anti-semitic greeks oh and guess what i just read not too long ago in a an israeli newspaper and you know why they call themselves israelis the old testament they were called israelites but they don't call themselves israelites they call themselves israelis i read in an israeli newspaper 
Guess what the most anti-Semitic country in the world is, according to them? Greece. What country gave us the New Testament in their language? Greece. Guess what country spread the gospel all over Eastern Europe? Greece. Guess what church was the most persecuted church in the history of the world? The Greek Orthodox Church. The Eastern Orthodox Church. You know why you've never heard of them? Because they consider the Western Church heretics. They've never heard of the pre-trib rapture. Pre-trib rapture? Are you people insane? Where is that found in the Bible? I can read the Bible in Greek, they'll tell you. They've never heard of the pre-trib rapture. you got to go to Bible college or you got to go to the church and be taught the pre-trib rapture. Because reading it on your own, you'd never see it. You'd never see it. It says, we'll be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. And, and not Donald either. No. And the last trump is what? The seventh one at the end of the tribulation. There's seven of them. That's why the, the Greek church doesn't have fellowship with us. We're a bunch of heretics. Those people have paid paid for their faith with their lives. Are they perfect? No. And they're starting to uh, go toward Rome. And they have images that they call icons. You know, they're not perfect. But Greece is probably the most, per capita, is probably the most Christian country in the world. Those people read the New Testament in their own language. And they believe it. That's the difference. You know, most American churchgoers, they've never read the Bible. I mean, you know, I've only read it a few times. I've listened to it on um, audio a number of times. I've spent months doing that. Months. When I was driving a truck cross, cross country, little did I know the Lord was preparing me for this day. Yeah, praise the Lord for uh, Alexander Scorby, S-C-O-U-R-B-Y. You can buy the New Testament on CD for 25 bucks on Amazon and listen to it all day long, and you'll learn. Believe me, stick it in when you're on your way to work 15, 20, 30 minutes every day instead of listening to whatever you listen to. You know? But Greece, according to the Israeli newspapers, is the most anti-Semitic country in the world. Why? Because Jesus was the most evil anti-Semite that ever lived. And you watch. Pretty soon, all my Bible studies and everybody that preaches Jesus, we will be in violation of some hate law internationally and won't be able to preach on social media because somebody in the Israeli state might be offended at the word of Jesus. John 8, 44, Revelation 2, verse 9, Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Who was Jesus speaking about or to? Yeah. Oh, well, if you call him Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, to an Israeli, that's talking about the Messiah that's to come. Not, not this Jesus guy. And they'll tell you, oh, well, the word Jesus means earth pig. Or, or, or it came from, uh, uh, Jesus means Zeus. No, it doesn't. Do you know how many Greek people I've spoken to? And let me tell you something. Every time I go to a Greek restaurant, I start talking to them about Jesus. And their eyes light up. And they know the New Testament. And they can read it in their own language. And I, and I ask them questions, you know. I mean, I'm not a know-it-all. I, I try not to be. But the things I do know, I try to teach. You know, and I try not to stray too far from the Bible. I mean, I, I'm, I'm probably not right about everything. And, and, you know, if I'm wrong about something, correct me. I'll, I'll, get, on the, I'll get on YouTube and say, oh, I was wrong. I've done it before. 20 years ago, there's things I believe that I, I, I know is not true now. You know? 
um, Daniel 9. Going to Bible college. I thought Daniel 9 was about the Antichrist. No, it's about Jesus confirming the covenant. Praise the Lord. Verse 30. Luke 1, verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. And if you ask a Greek how to pronounce Jesus, guess what they're going to say? Jesus. Well, so I've heard some say Jesus. Kind of a Y-ish. You know? Uh, but it depends on what part of Greece you're from. Uh, have you ever heard of the Car Caribbean or the Caribbean? Have you ever heard of that? Caribbean, Caribbean. If you're in Europe, it's the Caribbean. If you're in, uh, if you're in South Florida, it's the Caribbean. It's the same word, you know. Look at the English. They can't even spell. They spell honor, H-O-N-O-U-R. I'm being facetious. I'm, I'm picking on my English brothers there. You know, I know we Americans, we, we know your, I know your language in, from Oxford predated America, and I'm just, I'm just joking around. I don't mean to, you know, I love the English people, and I know what you're going through if you live in London. God's heavy-handed judgment is upon our nations. The heathens have flooded our lands. So what did uh, Gabriel the angel say, sent from God? And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Oh, yeah. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, that holy thing which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who is called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And uh, another thing about England. Guess who gave us the King James Bible? Praise the Lord for James the King. And I got nothing against the Geneva Bible. It's just, you know... James didn't like the notes in uh, Calvin's book, John Calvin. Um, some of the notes I actually like and agree with. I had a facsimile photocopy of, of uh, the Geneva Bible. I lost it. Wouldn't you know it was a Jew that caused me to lose that? I had it in storage. And then he bought the storage company and he... Uh, quit sending me invoices. And I used to pay the thing like every three months, you know? And uh, he didn't send me a bill out. And then all of a sudden he sends me a bill and he says, oh my, you owe us a bunch of late payments, fees, and this, blah, blah, and this and that and the other. And he wanted me to pay him hundreds of dollars. I mean, it was only $20 a month. He said I owed him like a couple hundred dollars for late fees and stuff. I said, you know what? Keep it. You can have my storage unit. So he got a bunch of books, a lot of school books, because I kept my college school books. But uh, had a couple of Bibles I would have liked to kept. But hey, for a couple hundred bucks, I could have replaced them. But nothing wrong with the Geneva Bible. It's just the King James didn't like some of the notes. You know, I can't, I don't know. James believed in the divine right of kings. Which, uh, you know, the Bible even says God raises up kings and God takes down kings. He overthrows them. And I believe that. 
I believe that if the Tsar of Russia had been godly, communism never would have taken root in uh, communist Russia. And God gave the Tsar a warning in 1905. Do you know there was a communist revolution in 1905, uh, 12 years before the Russian Revolution in 1917? There was, but it failed. God sent the Tsar of Russia a wake-up call. But I guess he didn't heed the warning. Uh, you could read about Rasputin, the mad monk, they called him. He sounded like a witch to me, or a sorcerer. But the, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. All I know is Gabriel gave Jesus the name Jesus, and he was sent of the Lord. And for the Hebrew Roots people to change that is a denial of your King James Bible in English and the Greek. And the Greek. You know? You want to you want to sit at the feet of unbelieving antichrist rabbis? Your master? Or do you want to sit at the feet of the master, Jesus who is the Christ? the Messiah. And seriously, people, when the, when the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, comes, what do you want to bet? And I'm not a better, but I'm just saying. What do you want to, what do you want to bet that all the Jews are, will, will say that Yeshua has come? Praise GD. You know, they don't write God. They write GD. Yeshua HaMashiach has come, our Messiah, and he's going to put the goyim under our feet. Uh, what do you want to bet? We'll see. I mean, I could be wrong. You know, I don't claim to be a prophet, so I'm the only prophecy I know is in the King James Bible. That's the only prophecy I know. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name, amen.